In this video, I'm absolutely delighted to be driving a Reliant Kitten. First time in my life. Very close relative of the Reliant Fox I already own. And uh, I'm also very grateful to JW Morris Auto Services here near Wakefield. Uh, got a remarkable showroom of cars, look at that. And uh, they've let me use their canopy because the weather is horrendous, absolutely horrendous today. So what is a Reliant Kitten? Really, it is, this is a four-wheeled Robin. So the Mark I Robin came out in 1973, very popular with people who didn't have a full car license. So Reliant decided to try and make a four-wheeled version to appeal to people who wanted more wheels. Not everyone wanted a three-wheeler. Maybe some people would prefer the security of four. It's a path Reliant had trodden before with the Rebel, uh, as well as obviously the Scimitar and Sabre sports cars. But... Uh, this features delightful, I think, ogle styling. Uh, it's very much like a Mark I Robin until you get to the bonnet. But then it's got this new frontal section. The prototype had round headlamps and I think the van version did as well. Uh, this has got rectangular ones just to give it a bit of extra style. Uh, this one is also an estate um, or station wagon, depending on where you're from. Uh, you got a luxury, like a rear wiper, pretty much unheard of on a small estate at the time, but Reliant with the Scimitar had become a huge fan of a rear wiper. Uh, you could also have a little hatchback with a glass hatch, just like a Robin, or you could have this panelled out as a van. And the vans were a bit cheaper. A few people bought vans and then put rear windows in them. Crafty. Now we know it's got tiny little 10 inch wheels. We've got a Triumph Herald, I think it is steering rack. So the steering lock is sheer insanity. Look at that, great for drifting. This one wears very pretty little alloy wheels. There might be Cosmics, I'm no expert on wheels. Um, I'll grab the key and we'll have a look at the engine bay because the chassis is very, very different. So under the bonnet, we find the little engine. Now a Robin has a little hatch here uh, because the engine sits much further back. It's pretty much between the seats, really, especially when you take the gearbox into account. So the um, kitten, moved it all forward because there isn't a wheel here. So they could do that. And it obviously has benefits in terms of handling, moves the weight a bit further forward, but the engine is still sitting just behind the axle line. Dinky little radiator. This is Reliance own all alloy 848cc engine based on a standard Triumph engine, but all alloy rather than um, iron block. And with a dinky little SU carburetor. Moving inside, it's all a bit gloomy and black in here, but not helped by it being a gloomy day. We've got a little pull handle there to close the door, um, release straight out of an Austin Allegro, and uh, I think the indicator stalk and a lot of the switch gear is also BL. Uh, main difference to the Robin, look how flat it is here. There's a lot more space because the um, engine sits so far forward. A uh, nice little snickety gear lever. I will say I had a passenger ride in this car earlier. It collected me from the train station. That footwell is absolutely tiny. Uh, generally, compared to my Fox, this feels so much more compact. Um, the windscreen is almost in my face. The sun visor, uh, I think, is my airbag. So it's all a bit cozy, but uh, nice little comfy seats in here. It's in lovely condition, this one. Uh, it was saved recently. Um, it was running the risk of being scrapped because it had had a smash on that corner. So that's all been rebuilt and it's had a new engine fitted, a high compression engine, no less. So she should get a bit of a move on. Uh, we've got something here that some people might recognize, period accessory is just as you'd see in cars like the Escort and Cortina there, a clunk clip. And it allowed you to take the, the um, you can sort of basically slacken your belt so it isn't sitting tight against you. Inertia reels were still a bit newfangled in the early 1980s and people found them a little uncomfortable. They would set a static belt to be a little looser. So uh, that was something you did. You set a clunk clip to hold the tension. So there's just a bit of slack in the belt. I've got a single little eyeball vent there, uh, vent there for uh, ventilation. Seems ever so slightly not attached. A modern head unit, which I'm not awfully keen on. That's the wipers, heated rear window, light switch, heater blower, which I've got going. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is up there. No idea what that one is. Is it hazard lights? It is hazard lights. There we go. So that's our hazard lights up there. Uh, fog lights and then the rear wash wipe, is it? Or maybe it's just a rear wiper. But anyway, it, it, it works. 
and indicator stalk here also does the horn. Oh, that, that sounds sprightly. We have got winding windows, so that's an advantage over the Fox. They go down quite nicely. Um, but while we have got a rear seat, uh, the access is only via the tipping seat. I presume it's that button. Is it? No, maybe it's that button. There we go. Oh, and look at the indentation there in the carpet for my enormous feet. Ugh. I fold myself in and uh, that could definitely be worse, but it is set with a seat quite far forward. I don't think I'll be so comfortable behind the driver's seat. And uh, I'm sitting quite high up as well because we're on top of the rear axle and I have not got enough headroom at all. Um, it is worth remembering, this is actually a very small car. It is not big at all. Uh, rear windows don't open. I don't think they ever did on the estates. I think they could do on the hatchback. So we've got the uh, rear wiper there to show off and uh, it's a bit old fashioned on the door handle. Look at that, it looks like it's been taken out of a house. But uh, there's a fair load area under there. Uh, parcel shelf looks like it is actually fitted. It also looks like it's screwed into place. So maybe it's not removable, but a decent amount of luggage space there. Right, as the weather's so spectacularly grim, let's get driving and I'll tell you more about the kitten. Fire up. This one's running absolutely beautifully. Uh, it's currently owned by the people who uh, have been sorting out my fox. So this bodes well. If my fox is running this well, I will be a very happy man indeed. Uh, wipers, there's just about enough overlap to avoid a triangular doom. Uh, the wipers aren't working particularly well, that one especially at the moment. But uh, put some lights on, shall we? Because it's so gloomy. Very sharp, um, abrupt clutch. And of course you also get a superb turning circle on these as well. Final load into the traffic. So the Reliant Robin had been introduced, I'm um, just going to operate the rear wiper, in 1973. And the, the um, kitten came along two years later, 1975. But uh, it wasn't a good, uh, well it wasn't a huge success. And by 1978 Reliant had actually dropped it as a mainstream model. You could still order one special order as someone did with this one. This one dates from 1981. But by 1982, Reliant had dropped even that. Uh, the Robin had been replaced by the Rialto, which was like an updated version. And the Kitten wasn't really replaced. It was kind of replaced by the Fox. The Fox being a utility pickup vehicle with, uh, um, you, you could optionally specify a rear seat, but it wasn't really a family car. They uh, had hopes of developing a family car on the Fox platform, but it sadly didn't amount to much. But uh, the Fox uses the same chassis to all intents and purposes. There's some subtle changes to the front suspension, but I mean it isn't identical. Uh, but uh, otherwise, the Fox is pretty much just a kitten. But with a, a wider body, I, I'm struggling for elbow room here. It feels very compact compared to my Fox. And the steering column is offset as well. Uh, it's slightly above my right knee, which is all taking a bit of getting used to. It's all feeling familiar, but somehow different. But that little 848 cc engine works very well. It means she'll hold motorway speeds all day. The gearing is quite a bit short, sorry, taller than the Fox. So uh, it brings the revs down at higher speeds. These will apparently sit at sort of 75, 80 quite merrily uh, in a way that little 850cc cars usually don't. Uh, an 850 Mini, for instance, would um, be screaming at 70 and uh, probably wouldn't put up with that behavior for too long. But the, the Kitten, that little revy engine, um, was designed for all that and a, perhaps a bit more. I am missing intermittent white, but that wasn't necessarily something you got on cars of this era. Uh, this is very much a 1970s design, even though this example dates from the early 80s. It is a little unrefined. The suspension is a bit bouncy because it's simple leaf spring at the back. But, you know, we've got coil spring double wishbones at the front. So uh, it is actually sort of designed really well. It's designed to handle albeit with the limitations of rear wheel drive and a simple live axle. Let's uh, take a round of wet roundabout and see how she does. 
all drum brakes no servo again a little backwards perhaps for the early 1980s uh, pretty much all of its rivals would have been on two front discs uh, the mini took a while i think 1984 was about the time that all minis had disc brakes one thing i've not demonstrated is the turning circle so let's see if we can get round before this skip and uh, Oh, no. Oh, maybe? Maybe? Yes. So that's how good the turning circle is. They really do turn uh, on absolutely nothing. I think 23 foot is the turning circle. You feel the tyres scrubbing a bit at that, but it does it. It's uh, very impressive indeed. Yeah, it's quite a refined little engine. Um, again, compared to competition, the Mini had an all-iron engine. Oh, almost stalled it, just saved it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds faster than it is, but uh, picks up speed well enough, I would say. And it feels quite well planted as well. The steering is so accurate, being a uh, rack and pinion. Very revvy little engines because, of course, all alloy, it's all very lightweight, so they're surprisingly zingy things. That's us up to 50. Yeah, that's relaxing in a way the Fox definitely isn't. But you know, you can feel things moving around the doors, move around a bit, it's all a bit clunky. And uh, by the mid 70s, the Reliant Kitten had some very good rivals out there. Uh, the French Super Minis, the Italians were starting to get in on the act. Uh, but the sheer economy of these cars, they can deliver comfortably over 50 miles to the gallon, driven gently, was unlike anything else out there. So uh, there was a major buying point. And then the fact that, you know, everything you bought in the 1970s would rust. And yeah, there's steel chassis, but the bodywork on these is fiberglass, so that's not going to rust reasonably good torque as well yeah this is um, this is entertaining it just feels frenetic and energetic and uh, you definitely couldn't say that for all of its rivals the brakes need a good shove uh, this has actually had um, new shoes recently they're still bedding in so I'm having to be a little careful It's a nice car and it's such a vibrant colour as well. It's in a way an unfortunate colour because of the unfortunate Only Fools and Horses connection, which um, uh, Reliance are very well known for. And uh, people also love painting the wrong Reliance uh, yellow. Not usually four wheelers though, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is a great little car. Heater seems to be keeping me toasty. I've got fresh air vent there, which is nice. I like a bit of fresh air to the face. On the damp day like today, when you've got the heater running, just a little bit more comfortable. So while it does feel quite dated, I think it is worth remembering that some of its rivals were very dated. Its rivals would have included the Citroen 2CV, um, incidentally. So uh, I, I would rather have a 2CV myself uh, they came back on sale in the UK in 1974, but uh, I can definitely see why people like these. It is, it is a little more peaceful and a little more refined than the clattering um, uh, French uh, snail, much as I love them. So with just 4,074 built, the kitten is quite rare. Not as rare as the fox, there were a mere 600 or so of those. But uh, it, it just goes to show, I think they built something like 27,000 Mark I Robins. It's a familiar soundtrack, just that little bit quieter.
quite a lot of the um, engine noise is actually the little radiator fan. It's a little plastic fan. And they do make a certain amount of noise. We're getting a bit of wind noise as we go faster and faster. But uh, I think that just goes with the territory, unfortunately. Yeah, just a bit bouncy and unrefined is the um, issue there. Um, there are definitely things I like about this more than my 2CV, but ride quality is not one of those things. Oh gosh, we've been blown around by Storm Dudley now. What is it with me driving plastic body car in wind? This is nice and of course one of the other things I love is that the economy class was so interesting. You got cars like this, you got the Mini, you got the 2CV, uh, the French Super Minis. Uh, there was such variety going on and uh, we just don't see that these days. Uh, so it's definitely a thing to celebrate is how different this is. So that was the delightful little Reliant Kitten. I have to get closer to it just to remind myself how tiny it truly is. An extraordinary little car with some um, hidden talents. So uh, thanks very much to um, Adam and his dad for letting me drive this example. It's nice to finally tick that off the box. Uh, like I say, if you'd like to see more Reliant content, then do check out my other uh, videos, which might be about this um, Reliant Fox. We now have blue Reliant Fox t-shirts in stock on the um, Hubnut store. Look at the description for details. Otherwise, thank you. I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Oh heavens, I almost forgot a rear wiper test. Oh, horn. There we go. The blade tired, but still a surprising novelty on a vehicle launched in 1975.